Okay, so hello everyone. Today we'll talk about the input output in a Java. So um, for today the plan is the next. First we will cover what kind of issues we can have with the data storing in the program and why do we need to use some external uh, resources to store the data. Then we'll talk about three classes that allows to us to communicate with the external um, files uh, first one is a file class, second one is print writer class, and third one is scanner class. And the last, uh, we will talk about uh, about reading the data from the web or from the internet. So, let's start with the data storing issues in the program. Um, data storing in the program. Uh, when we run the program, uh, we can store some data in array, we can store in a linked list, we can store in stack queue or any other data structures. But the issue with the uh, data storing in the program is that after we terminate the program, we lose the, uh, all the data. But in order to keep all the data, we need to use some, those data in a file or maybe in a, uh, in a database. Um, and um, we have special class called file class that allows us to um, to access to the files um, it allows us to obtain the file properties it allows to for example uh, with the file class we can check can we read the data from that file do we have access to, the, uh, to that file um, then the file class allows us to delete the file uh, or rename the file so uh, when we want to access the data or file, uh, we need to first, of course, specify the uh, location of the file. And we have two ways to access the, uh, to specify the location. First one is the absolute file name. So we, we need to write the complete path to that file. So um, for example, when we want to read the data from our local store, uh, we, in absolute file name, we need to write the full name, the complete path. For example, here, let's say we have some file called <clears throat> welcome.java, and that file is located in a folder called book. Um, and the book itself is located at uh, drive letter C. So here we specify the full name, the full path to get access to that file. Or, second way, we can use the relative name. <clears throat> a relative name is used when we want to get the data, for example, if it is located in our current date directory. <clears throat> and uh, when we write the relative file name location, we can just skip or uh, omit the directory path. For example, let's say that welcome Java is located in our current directory and we can just write the name of the file and we can get access. Both ways are valid. It all depends <clears throat> on uh, your condition where uh, your files are located. And um, of course, if you don't know the full path name, <clears throat> you can just use the relative file name. File class uh, has many methods. Here I have provided just a few of them. Uh, the methods that are mostly or commonly used. So uh, first method is just exists. It checks do have some file or not. As you can see, it return type is boolean. Can read. Uh, it checks do we have access to that file or not. Uh, like can we read the data from that file? Uh, sometimes we can set some um, access specifications to that data. For example, we can say that we can write that some data to that file, but we cannot read. And uh, this method checks can we read the data from that file or not. And as you can see, the return type is boolean. So if it is if it returns true, it means yes, we can read the data from that file. On and if it is false. No, we cannot read. Can write, uh, it's also uh, 
I would say same category of can read, but it checks can we write the data to that uh, file. Of course, and as you can see, it's return type also boolean. If it is true, we can write the data. If not, it return false. Is directory. Um, it uh, allows us to check if the file object represents the directory. And as you can see, it's also return type is boolean. Is file. Uh, it allows to check is that file object is uh, represents file or not, and return type is boolean. Is absolute. Um, it checks is that pass absolute or not. So, for example, uh, we want to check is that file pass is absolute. Uh, if it is like this, then it returns true. But if you have only just like portion of the file pass, it returns false. Get pass, uh, for example, it returns string and it's necessary to get the pass to that file. For example, we know that we have access, we have the object, we have the file, and we want to just to know what is the pass to that object. We want to know full pass. Uh, as I said before, this is a not full um, list of the methods. All other methods can be checked at chapter 12 in the book Introduction to Java Programming by uh, Lang. Next, um, we'll talk about the file input and output. Um, as you can see here, for the file class, it allows us only to work with uh, um, pass, with uh, um, access, uh, with uh, checking do we have that file or not. But in order to uh, write the data, in order to read the data, we can use the classes scanner and print writer. Uh, scanner it reads the data from the file. Print writer uh, allows us to write the data from the uh, from the file. So let's start with the print writer class. So print writer class allows us to create the file and write the data to that file. So first, uh, before starting to work with the print writer, we need to instantiate the object of that. And in order to um, create the object of the print writer, you just need to write print writer, then, then, then the name of the object, then new print writer and the file name uh, with which file we want to work. And after creating, instantiating the object, uh, we can invoke the print, println, or printf methods. So here are the list of the main print writer methods. Here are the first two the constructors. Uh, the first constructor allows to us to work with the uh, object of the file. So uh, if, for example, we have already worked with the file through the class file, we can just, in our constructor, we can write just the name of that object and that's it. Or we can just write the name of our file in a string format. Then we have methods like a print uh, with a parameter string. So if we want to write uh, the string in the file, we can just write the print and then inside of the uh, brackets, we can just write the message or the data that we want to uh, write in a string format. This one is for the integer, if we want to write integer. Here, this one is for the double. Uh, we can write boolean, we can write char. As you can see, all of them, the return type is void, so it returns nothing. So here is an example how to work with, uh, um, with the print writer class. First, we create the object of the class file, um, and then here in the brackets, we write the name of our file. Uh, here in this moment, it's uh, called scores.txt. Uh, then we check if that file exists or not uh, with the method exists, as you can see. And uh, if the file exists, it returns true. And if the file exists, we just print the message the file already exists, and we just exit the program. It means that we don't uh, we don't need to write anything. But if the file doesn't exist, uh, we use try. Um, and also, guys, please pay attention that here we declared the uh, exception handling. 
it says throws exception. So um, of course, when we write, when we work with a file, um, we can have some issues with accessing data, or maybe the file doesn't exist, or directory that doesn't exist or we can have any other issues. So that's why we need to declare here the exception. Then we, inside of the try, we create the object of the print writer. And here we specify the file uh, of object. So here we specify this object. And then um, uh, we just uh, write some message to the to that file so first we write here we write print and we write string message then we write 90 and here as you can see it's write print a length so it, what does it mean print a length it writes the message to the file and then go to the next uh, to the next line so uh, after these two lines the message will be john t smith and then we have 90 and the next message will be written not in the same line, but it will be written on the next line because of the printer line. Then it print, writes Eric Jones. So it writes Eric Jones and writes 85. And it also prints a line. So when we want to write the next message, it will be written on the next line. Next, we will talk about the uh, reading the data with class scanner. You may be already familiar with the class scanner uh, because uh, we read the data from the console, but the scanner class allows us not only to read the data from the uh, console, but also from the text files. Uh, just quick reminder, in order to read the data from the console, you just need needed to write scanner input. This is the name of, the, of our objects in the new scanner and then system.in, so it allows us to read the data from the console. But if we want to read the data from the text um, text files, you declaration is the same, but inside of the parameters, you just need to write new file and the file name. So here you say that you want to read the data from the file, not from the console. Here are the main methods um, of the scanner class. The first is a scanner source file, so it allows us to read the file object. Second is a source string, so we write the name of the uh, file in the format of the string, and then we read the data. Then the method close, it closes the scanner. So, uh, for example, when we read the data from the file, uh, we may reach the end of the file, and then we can just uh, don't maybe we don't need to use scanner anymore so we can just close the method close and it close the um, scanner class and it allows to uh, close the resources that is used by the uh, scanner class uh, then method has next uh, as you can see the return type boolean it checks uh, for example, we have read some portion of the data and we want to check do you have the other data uh, in txt on that file. And we can just use has next and uh, get our uh, answer. Next, it reads data from the file in a string format. <clears throat> next integer, it reads the data in the form of in the format of integer. So it reads some data up until the white space, and then it converts it to the integer. Of course, uh, we need to be sure that that data is in, in, in the form of the integer. Uh, because if it's not in the form of the integer, then we can have some like exception. We need to uh, catch that with exception handling. Then next long, it reads the data in the form of the long, of course, we can use like has um, boolean, has um, double, or has float, uh, depending on the format of the, our reading. Here is the example of the scanner um, file of the class. So first, we declare the file object with file scores txt. So we want to read the data from the scores txt. Then we create the input object of the scanner. 
and then uh, we have the while loop that reads the data from the score.txt and inside of score.txt we have uh, the data in this format so first it's a first name then we have the middle name then the last name and the score that that person got so first we have the while loop that uh, runs while we have some data to read then we create the first variable uh, of the string format with the first name and it reads the data up until the white space so it first reads the first string up until the white space so here we, we have the john then we have the middle name so it reads the next data also up until the white space which is a t then we have the last name it also reads the data from the uh, the next data up until white space which is smith and then we have score um, this one it reads this data and converts it to the integer. Then we print the data and then it goes to the next line of our uh, txt file. Then after when we are done with reading the uh, file, we just uh, invoke method close to allocate, delegate the resources from the scanner object. Uh, of course, we can read uh, the files not only from the scanner, we can uh, also read from the web internet. So some files are located not only on our local uh, directory, but it can be located in the internet. And in order to read the data from the internet, of course, we need to know what is the address of that file. For example, um, the file of the google.com uh, is located at this address so it's a google.com slash index.html and if we want to read that data from internet with Java we just need to um, uh, request that data from this address and then we can handle that and how does it work in uh, just overall for example when we open the browser and when we type some address uh, our browser sends the request through the internet to the web server of that address uh, then web server uh, processes the data and uh, um, takes that file and gives back as a response to our request so here is an example how to work with uh, reading the data from the web so here we have um, we read the data from the, our console and it's a new scanner system in next and we store the, our data in at the variable URL string then we need to uh, use the try and catch because um, when we want to access the data in the internet uh, we can have maybe some network issues or maybe the file doesn't exist or maybe um, the address is not correct that's why we need to use try and catch as you can see Inside of the try, we create object of the class URL, and here we just specify the URL address. Then we create the variable called count. It count is necessary to uh, know what is the length of our file, like how many characters does it has. Then we uh, create the object of the class scanner with the name input. And then we have the while loop that reads the data from that address and it reads line by line so uh, here it's as you can see we have string line and then input dot next line so next line is necessary to read the whole line and it stops when we reach the end of the line then we get the length of that string and adds to the count integer and in the end, uh, we can just output the, uh, the length of our file, like we can output how many strings do we have or characters we have in that file. Um, but during execution of this program, of this line of the code, we can have two exceptions that, that can be thrown. For example, we can have uh, incorrect or invalid URL address then uh, if we have invalid URL address this catch will this line of the code will catch that exception 
uh, and that exception is, is malformed URL exception. Um, or maybe we can have some errors with uh, input output of the file, so we can have the catch that reads uh, the data from uh, from the web internet. So um, that's it for today. Uh, for the uh, full information, please read Introduction to Java Programming, 10th edition uh, by Daniel Lang, chapters 12.10 uh, till 12.10. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much for uh, watching. Bye.